logic school of management it is symbol logic welcome to another episode of uh, business sense business sense is business plus essence so it's the essence of the business uh, sponsored by logic school of uh, management uh, and this is an entrepreneurial conversation with an eminent entrepreneur and a person and today my guest is a, a very very eminent uh, person both in the professional managerial and social field uh, none other than uh, mr r madhav chandran okay Mother, welcome. But you mean you need to give me one more minute to to introduce you to the audience. Okay, um, Madhav uh, comes from Central Travancore. Okay, he's an engineer uh, with a vast uh, working experience in blue chip IT corporates such as HCL and TCS. Then the entrepreneurial bug caught him, and he switched the base from outside Kerala to Kerala and Cochin. Now he's the uh, chairman of two companies. One is Cyberland Group, and the other is uh, LinkNet. Okay. Now uh, he's a very decorated person in the parlance of IT. Many awards from CRN, many other awards. CR is a computer magazine. Many awards from Computer World and many other IT organization. Uh, Madhav currently is more known across the, the Kerala and Tamil Nadu and across a, a particular world called Rotary World as a district governor of Rotary District uh, Three Two Zero One. Okay. So if I really describe him managerially, I will say that he is a Senior Vice President and uh, President Designate of uh, Kerala Maland Association. If we want to describe him entrepreneurially, he is a Chairman of uh, Cyberland and Chairman of LinkedIn. If you want me to introduce me socially, he is a District Governor of uh, Rotary District Three Two Zero One. And to add to that, he is also the Honorary Secretary of CanCure, a foundation that has been doing human services for cancer patients in the state and particularly central part of the state uh, over the last uh, five ten years. Okay, Madhav, let's come to the question. We are all in COVID time. We have lost a considerable amount of time. We have lost considerable amount of market connect. We also lost considerable amount of uh, finance and economy as a part of it. So, how do you view the whole thing, Madhav? It was a. Did you ever think in your dream that okay, a situation like this will ever happen to uh, people like us or across the world? Thank you, Azhar, for this opportunity. First of all, and for those uh, flowery introduction which you gave about me. Uh, maybe half of it is true, half of it is a uh, uh, good friends, uh, you know, good words about me. I would say. Uh, anyway, thank you for this opportunity for uh, sharing some thoughts about what we are going through right now. Well, as you rightly said, we are going through something very different, unique. Yeah. I would say this was this was needed because yeah. uh, uh, you know, for from an IT background, if you look at it, when you have a problem when you are going through a current situation, when you are going through something. Which is a, a, a normal situation when, when there is something going not too well. We yes. do a reboot. Yes, a reboot. A rebooting. That's the easiest thing which we can do. You know, when I when I was in TCS, I remember when I used to do customer service for a software called EX. Whenever there was an issue with the, with the software when it was not doing something which was supposed to be done by that application, we used to say that just close everything, restart, and then it will be all right. It used okay. to work. I mean, we never knew how it happened, but it used to work. I believe this is something similar to that in life. Actually. Because we were all going through a very fast-paced life with all yes. the all the gadgets which were all at our you know hand with a lot of convenience were given by those electronic devices and the software applications and the apps. You know, suddenly you know we we thought that we had no time for anything and people were yes. finding it difficult to find out. For for example, they used to ask me in industry in in business they used to ask how do you find time, mother, for social service? And I used yes. to find time for governorship or for cancer or whatever. They used to ask me. I used to say it's a priority. You know, it's up to you to prioritize your activities. Then you will find time because 24 hours are the okay. same for everyone. But here, you know, nature or maybe somebody somewhere has devised some reason for all of us to take a break forcefully. I mean, we never imagined that the entire world will come to a standstill like this, and we will be sitting at home spending time with our near ones and dear ones. And you know, looking back at what was something like a glory, uh, you know, which we had in our lives, and suddenly there's a break. So this is actually a, a need of our lives, I would say. But only thing is that you know we have heard that this pandemic and this kind of disasters happening in once in a century or something like that. That's what the 
Pavel says, but then I believe it hit us at the right time when we were at the right age. When if it is our age is the right age, that means you know, uh, no, it hit us now, and we have to go through this. And I think this is the time for stock taking and to see what was going wrong rather than what was going right, and okay. an opportunity for us to correct it, and okay. you know, take take life as a new lease of life for, for a change and start fresh. That's what I would say. So two elements that you actually brought out, Badal. One is called the reboot. Okay, some people, of course, call it reset. You know, it's a reset or reboot. And the second element, which you actually very nicely described, is time. Uh, I always believe that uh, time is a very elastic thing, and uh, time goes to those people who seek. And you are a prime example of that. Actually, you know, there is a Canco Foundation, there is a Rotary International, there is these two businesses that you ran, and also generally as a public speaker and many other things that you do. So, if you really look at it, you seek the time; the time comes to you. That's what I think. Otherwise, you know, if you always say that I don't have the time, and if you feel that I don't, you don't have the time, you just don't have the time for everything. I'm happy that I'm speaking to a person who really prioritizes on his time and also who finds time for everything. So that is actually a wonderful thing. Now. There is a. Now, what do you think of the future? Now, of course, you said it's a time we take, we take a break and we try to evaluate what actually is uh, in, with us. Uh, and we also can actually maybe strategize as to what we could be doing with the resources and uh, with the market that it is going to be. So, what is your general inkling about the market that is going to be the future that is going to be, Madam? Yes, sir. I think uh, it's a bit too early to actually make any predictions right now. As to we really don't know what's going to happen tonight or tomorrow. That's the situation uh, in which we are right now. Uh, okay. Having said that, if things are all fine and we are going to survive this situation, because now you know lockdown is being eased out or slowed down or whatever you call it, uh, you know we never know what's going to happen when people are going to come out in flocks and you know uh, take it easy. Absolutely. For the Absolutely. Absolutely. There will be a second and third wave coming. You are right. Yes. I came to the office after a long 45-50 days today. And suddenly yeah. I found that you know all the shops are open, people are walking around as if there is uh, uh, nothing like a COVID uh, there at all. So we don't yes. know actually what's going to happen if that W curve or whatever curve which uh, with the experts are defining all these days is not going to yeah. come back. Then you know obviously we need to actually have a have a real serious real look at what's going to happen. That is where actually yeah. what you asked me the question about what is the new look which we are going to. See from tomorrow onwards, if if everything is going to be normal and things are going to be under control, I believe you know this is a time when we got to go back to our basics. In the sense, we are all people who have you know have had a feeling that we have achieved something in life, we have accomplished something in life, we have reached some kind of uh, you know milestones, and we have you know made something on our own. Now I think that is that is past. Now we got to actually have a real look at our own self as to what are our strengths, what are we good at. I mean, forget okay. about what we achieved in our past. Yes. Now let us look at it from uh, an entrepreneur's point of view, as a startup kind of a thing. Even okay. for uh, for a, a guy who has done everything in his life, I think if you need to be in business now yes. with this new uh, phase in life which is coming up, I believe we got to start afresh as a startup entrepreneur. And there, you know, actually you got to look at your strengths and weaknesses and leverage on your strengths so that the business situation has changed. The players are maybe different, you know. Some yeah. of them are already gone. Some yes. are going to be there, and you got yes. to actually look at it from a point where what is your strength? Leverage on that. That is what I think. Yeah. So you are saying that we should leverage on the strength, and you are also saying that okay, it is a little too early to predict. At the same time, when you came to the office, you saw people walking around as if nothing has happened. <laughs> that is that is going to be very frightening, you know, because the way in which uh, the authorities had clamped down, uh, they locked in. Thinking that people will stay at homes and they will break the chain and they will ensure that uh, the first and second and the third wave will not come. All of us uh, need to realize that we are going through a time there is no cure and there is no vaccine. I think you know if people don't realize that situation, then we are in for some tough time that could happen on the interim period. Okay, now, mother, I just want to check you with uh, take you have your take on a particular concept. Now, at one end, there are people who are saying that we need to look at the livelihood. And if this clamped in, or you're going to clamp in, or you're going to lock in like this, everything is going to go down to zero. Okay, the economy will actually shatter. Uh, there won't be anything financially. We'll be completely uh, shattered. All those things happen. There's another set of people who think that lives are important. You know, we let's take care of the lives, and the livelihood can happen later. So I think slowly the world is going through a, a sort of a, a sort of a uh, deliberation or a discussion on life versus livelihood. So, for instance, uh, if you ask. Uh, 
Donald Trump, he says livelihood is important now. Okay, you ask Scandinavian country chiefs and all, they say livelihood is important now. At the same time, you ask uh, many many nations such as India, we say life is important, so let us actually protect life. So, what is your take or view on life versus livelihood, mother? This is a million dollar question which everybody is finding uh, trying to find an answer. For. So, this is basically yeah. rooted from the fact that different countries have different ways of looking at life itself. Yeah, I mean, yes. life and relationships and other kind of values which we have. I mean, the so called Indian ethos and Indian values, we always had that tremendous importance for relationship, value for yes. life, and such kind of things. That is where actually we are stuck. In okay. US, you know that, you know, when once you reach a particular graduation stage or maybe after your school, you are detached from your parents, you go on your own and you take care of yourself, your parents take care of themselves. That's the way it is. So okay. there actually the difference is that. Here we take care of our parents, we take care of our elderly people, we take care of our relatives, we take care of all the people who are along with us, even the staff members. We don't feel like letting them down and you know we pay them the salary. All this is happening here in India, but it's a different yes. world out there. Then. But having said yeah. that, this okay. is this particular thing about uh, livelihood versus life. The yeah. issue here is that it is a fact that there is no point in continuing a lockdown like this because we don't yes. have an answer to a, so a problem where lockdown is a solution because it is not that we are getting the green zone because the virus is gone it is just because yes. the numbers reported are not there you go yes. out there the virus is waiting for you so that yes. is a that is an issue which we have to face so whether you come out after one month two months or three months the virus is not yes. gone we don't have a solution for the virus yes. so yes. as well go out and face it is what the question of livelihood coming in there because we don't have the resources to go on like this for four or five months uh, in, a, in a stretch. So unless there is a medicine which is found out, which, which yes. is hopeful, you know, we are all hopeful that maybe in June or July, whenever it will come out, it may be a magical miracle drug which is going to come out. Vaccine okay. anyway is out of question because we can't uh, pull on till the vaccine comes out because it is not going to come before December or Jan or Feb next year. Yes. Yes. So there is there is only one way in which you have to fight the virus is go out and get it. That is where you have to take a call as to how you are going to take care of your weaker weaker section that is elderly people and those who are prone to these kind of diseases which can actually be tragic and uh, you know uh, deadly we have got to take a call but then i think it's a practical approach as to we have to ease out this lockdown in a, in a, in a systematic manner right now what we have done is we have just reduced the load on the medical system yes we have sort of flattened the clock curve yeah. having given all praises and accolades to all the medical people and health workers i must say that they have not been tested yet they have been given a break. They have been given a breather by all of us sitting at home to somewhat disciplined manner. Once yes. that discipline is gone, that is when these people are going to be really tested, and we need to really tell them whether they are going to, you know, uh, meet up to that task or not. But then that has to be done. That is the only way in which it can be done. And I believe today is the first step towards that. When it is a bit eased out, we are going to try it out. If things work out if within a controlled manner, we are safe. Otherwise. God save our country is what I would say for the time being. Then we will think about what is next and what is going to be done, you know, what we are going to plan, everything is done. Maybe in the next 10 days time, we will come to know how things are going to shape. Yeah, I, I, I hope, uh, and I, I also hear from you about the balanced approach at the same time. The last pandemic, mother, has really taken the, the toll on the numbers. And I hear that in 1918, the number came to close to about 50 million people, about 500 million people affected of course we are far ahead in terms of our science and technology and the vaccines and medicines etc is concerned but the, the very thought of looking at those numbers actually gives uh, you know the, the sort of the, how the gravitas of the situation yeah that actually brings me to brings me from a businessman mother to a a, a social uh, a person mother uh, i had always watched you been very passionately going behind the can cure foundation as a as a, as a sort of a uh, assistance to cancer patient and the, the incidence of the ca cancer in the state of Kerala as well as Central Kerala has been going up. Uh, maybe it's because of the lifestyle, etc. That is one set. The other, we have taken charge last year as the governor of our Rotary District uh, 3201. So both related to both the social and there's a lot of uh, charity and otherwise activities that you do. So from a perspective of a, a social uh, leader, okay, how do you view humanity now? What is that we need to do? Now, to take care of the, this large, huge chunk of human beings of all strata right in front of us, mother. 
see, as a social worker, I would say this is a different cup of tea right now. Yes. Because uh, any social worker would love to be there at the point of impact when a disaster strikes. Yes. Especially in Rotary or any any NGO for that matter. They are yes. the ones who reach there when there is an earthquake or a pandemic or whatever happens. You know, they will be there with their expert volunteers, trained task force. All those people would be there at the point of impact. Yes. For a change this time, we were told to stay away, stay at home. Yes. And it's all remote control operation, which almost all the NGOs were doing, barring maybe some of the university workers who were asked to make some, you know, community kitchen or some food to be prepared. Otherwise, nothing to be done by any NGOs worldwide, if you look at it. You know, You're everybody right. Right. I agree. Every, everybody was put away. But now I would say that that is where actually we redefined that social distancing part. We mm -hmm. said it is not social distancing. It has to be only physical distancing. Socially, okay. you have to be together. For yes. example, Rotary, Rotary also did a lot of things, uh, you know, to do counseling, to do some psychological approach for people who are in trauma, who are depressed because of these kind of calamities happening, because of the deaths happening, because of the scare happening. So yes. those kind of things we could do, and we could do a lot of things thanks to technology, you know, with uh, you know Zoom and uh, you know Webex and all kinds of uh, applications which were available. We were all yes. in touch. I would yeah. say, you know, all the meetings of all these NGOs which were happening in the past versus what happened in the lockdown time. It's a dramatic turnoff. The attendance is much more. We are actually having good times. Families are having, you know, a good time together with the Zoom and other applications being used. And I that is important at this stage. It's yes. important to stay together, to give support to each other, even though you're not going to be there with the patient. God forbid, is, you know, infected with the disease. At yes. least be there as a social connect to some means. That is exactly what we have been telling even the, uh, the Rotary workers or the cancer also. We actually give an announcement in the paper saying that cancer is there. If in case you are not able to get medicines, we will help you out. Because somebody has to be there. The feeling of that person being there for you, you know, it's very important in these yes. kind of situations. So okay. that is what is happening in these COVID times as far as Rotary is concerned. We are giving all kinds of support to the police force. We are giving all kinds of support to the health workers by giving them masks, PPEs and all kinds of equipments for their protection. Yes. Umbrella has given the police force all across the state. You know, it just started yesterday. I also had seen the respirators and... Uh, yeah, respirators uh, being given away. And yeah. food. And every day, almost yes. 2,500 food packets being distributed. All this happening, but at the same time, it's like swimming with hands and legs tied. But this is not the yes. way in which uh, an NGO or Rotary, uh, for that yes. matter, operates in a way. A disaster strikes, but then we have no other option but to wait and watch as to where we have to go in. So, for example, when the vaccine comes out, yeah. it's going to be different. That's yes. where the Rotary, which has got an experience of polio vaccines, is going to spring to action. And we will yes. be at the forefront when the vaccine is going to come out. I'm, I'm telling you as a team. So that is how it happens actually. There is an opportunity for people like us who are in business industries to actually do something extra than what we do for our own livelihood, our own. People who are there with us, the laborers, the workers, the staff who are there with us. Other than that, what can we do in our lives? That is where actually these kind of NGOs, the operations which I'm doing with Cancer or Rotary, that is where it, it comes to play. Some kind of satisfaction that you have done, something that extra bit than what you can do through your business. That is where it comes. Yeah, Madhav, I really like the way you have put it that it, it is not typically social distancing. It is actually physical distancing because social distancing, if you start uh, start entertaining, then the complete cutoff of the society will happen. So I think it's a very well put. See, I think uh, the Rotary Foundation had been instrumental in completely eradicating polio from the face of earth. And I understand that more than a billion dollar, at one point point five billion dollar, even with uh, uh, the personality such as Bill Gates or funds such as Bill Gates Foundation, etc. had been part of this. Now, do you think, now, see, I just look at Corona on one side, these are all, these are all diseases coming from the birds and animals we call zoonotic diseases. And on the other side, we also see diseases coming like Ebola, etc., which is uh, coming out of African continent. So is Rotary at the top ceased to the situation that now that, you know, we only have one or two nations to completely stop uh, the polio is concerned. Are you looking at something to take care of uh, uh, either immunovirus or uh, coronavirus or Ebola virus, something like that, or is there a continuum? Or are you thinking anything like this in the Rotary world? I mean, at the decision-making Rotary world. See, uh, Rotary, act, I mean, like any other organization, was taken aback when Corona struck. Anyway. Yes. The thing was nothing which was planned for. Yeah. So polio, obviously, we were we were ending that this close factor, and we were you know, almost there, you know, to yeah. end polio from uh, the world. Yes. Uh, but we had already made plans for taking non-communicable diseases as a priority before COVID came in. 
Yes. Now COVID has come in. The vaccination of COVID has is going to be a laborious task whenever it's going to come out. Whether yes. the drug comes out or the vaccine comes out, either of the two, you know, we, we got a lot of work to do. I mean, it's not easy yes. to reach the nook and corner of the world. I mean, you're not yeah. talking about a particular country or a particular part of a continent where this is given. It's given all across the world. That yes. is where a foundation like Rotary, a organization like Rotary International, can definitely reach out because of the network which it has. And I must say, Rotary, for that matter, the international leadership had acted so swiftly this time when COVID struck. I mean, without yeah. any experience on that particular factor, they were so lenient in you yeah. know giving out grants to each other. Yeah. We have got 530 districts all across the world, and yeah. we have given out $25,000 straight away as a, an interim grant. To give, okay. away, give away all kinds of protective gears and such kind of things, which each district felt was needed in that particular territory, and that was yeah. given out to almost almost nearly 400 odd districts, and they have cleared out almost eight million dollars worth of projects, which are actually for cold relief alone. Even in, yeah. in fact, in our part of the country, also in our part of the state, also we also got a crore worth of a project sanctioned in no time, which we are waiting okay. for. We are actually giving out one million masks, one million mm. protective gears to. Health workers all across okay, Kerala. Surgical masks. Yeah, surgical masks. Three ply surgical masks to be given for the government hospitals who are actually fighting to. I mean, starting from Coimbatore to Cochin, we are giving to uh, more than 300 or 400 hospitals which are actually uh, you know fighting the COVID uh, menace, and we are giving masks to them. And following yes. with that, you know, we are actually planning a project for uh, ventilators. More than 50 ventilators are being planned to be procured and given to hospitals where. COVID relief is to be done. So all okay. these kind of things are actually been done by Rotary as a, an impulsive reaction to this this particular virus, which has uh, you know attacked us at this point of time, where there is no planning done to actually yes. tackle this. Virus. So, Madhav, uh, yeah, good. I, I'm sure that Rotary will now go proactively indulge in um, even eradication of many of those uh, virus based uh, diseases as well. Uh, we have uh, been hearing about something called new normal, by the way. You know, there is they're now called old normal and new normal. For instance, namaste is a new normal. Wearing mask could be a new normal. Uh, you and I conversing uh, on, a, on a Zoom platform is a new normal. You know, we never thought, okay, we could be doing this. You know, I mean, two months back, we never thought that we could be doing something like this. In fact, many meetings that you hold these days, whether with your whether with your district officials or with the clubs, etc., that you handle is new normal. Many of the conversations that you do with your vendors and principals as a profession, it's also new normal. Now, this new normal which is actually coming up, I also see that some of the new normals will be where people will not be wanting to splurge, you know, as as the, the post-COVID time. So it's not that they will be looking at the premium products or the differentiating products, etc. There'll be purchase will be or buying will go into discretion. People may not be wanting to go into splurge. Maybe they may not be really looking at uh, highly paid holidays and and, and 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 maybe premium cars and premium villas and things like that. Probably may not be looking at. Of course, memories are shoot out too short. I think that after some time, we people will go. So these new normals that I, I look at it, I would like your your view on as a as a business person. As well as as a social person, in terms of you know the coming times, and that is the post-COVID times, will we reduce our? Will we go into discretionary purchases? Will we go into living within our means, or maybe we'll we'll go back to our uh, our real style of uh, living life, king size? What do you feel? Yeah, that, that's a good question because you were the first person actually, if I remember correctly, you know, came out of this new novel thing way back. Way back in the sense, two months back, you know, yes, the month of March, when we actually had a meeting with AMA and we came out of the presentation, new normal, and the particular jargon was being coined. You know, you hear all these jargons, in our, especially in our IT field, you know, every day you find new jargons you know, coming up, and we came out of that. And yes, we are now getting uh, accustomed to this new normal, yes, which is, as you rightly said, you know, we're talking, at, you know, sitting in Cochin itself, we're talking across this particular medium called Zoom. Right. Of the online, online we are about four places. kilometers away, mother, but yeah, then we are actually I, I, online. <laughs> yes, yes, and, and that's a new normal. And I, at home, I'm seeing new normals not only with uh, my own operations. My wife was sitting uh, in the other room. You know, she belongs to this company who very, very blatantly came out and declared that 75 percent of their workforce is going to work, you know, from home uh, by you know in, in the next two three years time. They're, they're not talking about any change even after the COVID uh, is over. So yes. this is this is the new normal we are talking about. But there are a lot of lot of ifs and buts attached to it. You know, it, it, it is not easy at all to guess what they have. Even that particular company, the biggest company, 
is talking about 75 percent sitting at home and working at home and you know make, make, making it as a new normal it's not easy at all because there are a lot of lot of issues attached to it but answering your question about you know the, the living life king size part of it i would say you know to, to a great extent you know people are not going to uh, you know cut down on their spending because they've got a wake up call actually yeah you know, they have got a wake up call in the sense they have got a feeling that whatever they have made can be useless in no time you know? oh, so that way, it's way that way, <laughs> yeah that way there is a there is a possibility that people will start living life also okay because still now we were all actually holding we were all preparing for the future when you know saving. we will be able to yeah. We, yeah we were saving so that we won't be able to make that much money as we are making right now in those days but now that is all gone you know you never know what's going to happen tomorrow you are in an icu in a, in, a, in an isolation ward or wherever it is everything is gone you can't even see you know that your near dear ones next to you even while you are breathing the last so why do you want to wait for that much of a time so people can start actually living life in size that way but at the same time having said this uh, let me tell you that you know when you talk about uh, the, the the tomorrow uh, which is going to happen when covid is going to get out of our lives uh, yeah. definitely we'll have a relook at the way in which we have spent money on infrastructure especially yes. the office setup which we have right now the the, the kind of uh, plush places where we have uh, you know made for meeting up our customers or vendors or suppliers so as to create an image this will all be changed into this kind of a platform where we really need to set up a good meeting room where you know yes. we can actually set up a good background i don't think i have got a good background you know good enough to you know portray a great image for a governor to actually uh, to give yeah. give a talk so we have to set it up and i was telling you know my wife sudhara you know the other day that you got to actually set up the room properly you know you can't just have a corner of your study made into a you know a room where you are actually talking with uh, customers so that has been yes. done then the security aspect comes in where you know you are taking all your machines out uh, to your homes or wherever you can and it is starting starting to work from there what are the security which you have we are talking about spending so much money on security and safety of your data and such kind of things that is that has to be taken care of then okay. now we are talking about your staff working from home you know you are cutting down yes. your resources that's fine but how do yes. you know that you know, he is on the machine he is logged in but he may not be there he must be doing something yes. else I, mean, yes. i remember my clients you know architects who are having cctv cameras even in those days you know i'm talking about yeah. last years two three months back to ensure that their staff is working on their own projects and not yes. on somebody else's project which they are doing in the past so yeah. that will that will be a big thing now the cctv cameras forget about the privacy of data privacy of your time and all those things your room is your office room not your house now your private room in your house is going to be your office room you got to maybe we could say madhav i think i'll you are your office you are your office yes, this yes. thing you just hold it around you walk around you are the office you got to you got to, you got to do that because you are you, you are going to talk about an output based remuneration in any case so yes. how do you how do you how do you value your output i mean you you can actually keep on working the, the football can be played for uh, one and a half hours but then the result is what matters so yes. unless the result is there how do you how do you get the output that is where your yes. time has to be accounted you got to see what he is doing so privacy is gone for a cost for sure i mean obviously you know you are working from uh, 10 to 7 or 10 to 5 or whatever time you say or maybe 24 by 7 that privacy part of it has to be compromised here. you got to really see what your employee is doing and when yes. you are cutting down on cost you got to give money for him to actually you know set up those things there your data time the, the you know the laptop usage is going to you know search like anything because you yes. you can't carry your desktop everywhere but connectivity is going to be a factor now you got to give money for the connectivity part of it yes. we are we are eagerly with the fighting to happen all these things are going to be the new normal tomorrow because you are not going to be you know tied down to your desktop in your office and sit on that or maybe in your cabin and wait for your customer to come in or your principal to come in for a meeting it's a different volume so that way you got yeah. to be geared up for a change Yes, Madhav, uh, the, the 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 penultimate question, not of course the last, the penultimate one. The nature has become much cleaner now. Okay, rivers are rivers are cleaner. The air is cleaner. Uh, the the floor. I mean, even I am told that uh, the ozone, the holes in the ozone are actually patching up, etc. Now you have been very closely associated with cancer, which you know has been one of the fall out of toxicity in living you know toxicity in living it could be fungicide pesticide the, the the air that you breathe and all those things put together do you think that okay in this new normal the possibilities of such dreaded diseases could be less or 
the quality of living of the human being can actually be better or we will go back to polluting everything making holes all over again what do you think yeah there are two uh, aspects of what you asked or said right now one is about the environment part of it the clean air and other things which are there the toxicity going down and all that uh, number two about the disease rate coming down yeah so how do you how do you calculate this disease rate is the first question now if you look at the hospitals i mean look at the op yes. look at the number of surgeries happening look at the yes. number of emos happening look yes. at the number of you know people going in for uh, angiograms and angioplasties are happening yeah i mean how do you how do you relate this rate to the actual requirement versus what is happening till now i mean it's a it's a, it's a dicey question to touch upon but definitely i'm sure with this clean air which is there uh, i'm sure you know many of the diseases may find a, a down downward trend but at the same time that is not going to be uh, uh, going to be a new normal i would say once covid goes off because yes things have to start working you know you can't have uh, you know everything together you can't have it as well as eat it in any okay. case so this will this will uh, change to some extent but definitely you can control to some extent because it's like as i said in the beginning it's a, it's a, it's a fresh start you yes. have the opportunity you have the chance at least to you know tune it in a in a in an acceptable manner so that the government as well as the operates as well as all are the decision making bodies they can actually put a line somewhere so that it is it is within the limits of what we can tolerate it on where okay. we were actually going for an explosion which was going on where we couldn't actually stop it it is like a fireworks going on you yes. couldn't stop it because you are in a fast track movement who will stop it who will belt the cat was at this now it's belt already the cat is belt now okay. drop to you to decide where to actually loosen the screws so that the controls can be in a in a very very rational manner so that people can actually get used to it in a in a very slow paced manner in in with that particular uh, that can right. be done at this yes madhav uh, we have actually across 30 minutes 30 31 oh. minutes and uh, i didn't know how the time has gone by you know it has been a very very uh, free wheeling and very very flowing conversation this is my stock question that i asked everybody who were asked this actually what is your advice to young entrepreneurs to start up entrepreneurs and early venture entrepreneurs what is your advice to them? well if you, i can i can only answer that question based on my experience I'm, okay i'm i'm not going to give them any any gyan from any books or anything i can only tell them one thing go by your instincts okay so there is something called an instinctive response which you can give as an individual it varies yes I, i i for one believe that that is the key to how you become successful or not the right. instinct has to be right yes i mean that is, i mean you you can't take everything from a textbook and you know uh, extrapolate that and uh, you know translate that into success so then everybody is this will possible the success and failure i believe is based on the instincts which you get and you got to actually follow the success i have done that when i when i quit my flash job from pcs at the age of 28 Okay. I mean, everyone, everyone actually came, came behind me and said that they please said that you are making harakiri. You know, you are committing suicide. You know, when you are on a fast track, when you are marketing manager of a company like PCS at age 28, coming out of it, you you get that question: Do you regret my that kind of question? But then I went by my instinct to go back to my roots in Kerala, where you know I'll be accepted, I'll be respected as a son of the soil. I wanted to make a mark here. I did that. when at the age of 50 when i stuck to i said i am going to spend 50% of my time for social service i decided and i said i am going to hand over the reins of my company to my colleagues who are who are equally good or even better than me they prove that they are better than me now so given that that's an instinctive decision okay. so far so good i mean things have but that instinctive decision will come only with some knowledge about what is going on around you that is also important. that is right have your knowledge have your knowledge at the same time listen to yourself as to what best you can do and that is what an entrepreneur when he is starting something on his own you have to actually go by instincts whether it's to work hard whether it is to you know tighten your belts and do something which is not done in the past it's up to you but then follow that strictly and then you will get success that's all i can say thank you madhav this is this has been really a wonderful uh, interview and tete tete with you i have enjoyed it i hope you are, you have enjoyed it as well and uh, it's a uh, pleasure to talk to you sir you know that you know we spend a lot of time chatting like this so it's always a pleasure and for for a change it's for others to watch so anyway i hope they'll also uh, you know like it as a pleasure like what we enjoy thank you so much yeah, yeah thank you very much and you take it and uh, as we do you know this is new normal namaste namaste thank you, <laughs> you mother take it bye